Stephen Sondheim was widely considered the most revered creator of American musical theater since the 1950s. He died Friday at the age of 91 at his Connecticut home. Over the years, Chicago was home to many acclaimed productions of Stephen Sondheim's works, including one inspired by a famous painting at the Art Institute. Here's a look at Sunday in the Park with George at the Chicago Shakespeare Theater. And joining us now are the director of that and many other Sondheim shows, Gary Griffin, and our own arts critic, Hetty Weiss. Welcome back, both of you, uh, and thank you for joining us to talk about this. Uh, Gary Griffin, let's start with you, please. Obviously, you know, a very unique Chicago connection there. What goes through your mind when you hear or see that clip? Well, I, I, I feel really a lot of hometown pride in it because we get to have the source material for one of well, my favorite Sondheim show, and I think one of the great ones. Um, I remember when um, I saw the number on the Tony Awards in 1984, and they, they did the end of act one where they create the painting. Within a week, I drove to Chicago. I was living with my parents in Rockford at the time, drove to Chicago to see the painting because I, I wanted to get that connection. It was great to, twice we did productions at Chicago Shakes for the show, just knowing that was, when we sang that song, Across the Way was the painting itself. And in 2006, we did a concert in Grant Park where we ended with Sunday as well. And, you know, it's just an amazing, um, it's a, first of all, it's a great work of art that inspired a great work of art. And I was very touched the last time I was there to visit the painting. The musical is now mentioned in the accompanying words about the painting in the art institute. And, and Gary, we also have a picture of you with Mr. Sondheim, um, as well as Chicago Shakespeare Theater's Barbara Gaines. What was he like in, in person? Um, I mean, a very, well, very articulate, compelling, smart, very funny, and um, very passionate about anything. Um, it, he um, liked to debate, he liked to, to um, really probe the depths of any subject and it, it wasn't if there weren't any depths he wasn't very interested in it but it was um he was a very inspiring person to to spend some time with because you know you, you you can think you care about what you do and then you're around him and realize this is someone who the the depths of his passion and commitment to the art form was is a st is staggering and Hetty, we also have a, a clip coming up of Sweeney Todd at Paramount Theater in Aurora. Uh, this show has also been done at Lyric Opera and uh, tiny storefront theaters. You know, what does that tell us about the scale of Sondheim's appeal? Well, it's fascinating. You know, he, of course, most of his work was uh, debuted on Broadway, or at least the important production you know, debuted on Broadway. So who would have thought that you could do it in a tiny theater like Porchlight or Theo Ubique or, you know, whatever, but also, you know, having it done on the stage of uh, the Paramount Theater in Aurora or having it at Chicago Shakespeare Theater, it held its own. And I think why it held its own is just because he chose fabulous subjects. He he dealt with everything about relationships, but it, it wasn't just you know, it wasn't just a marriage, although marriage was a subject of many of his works. It was really about, um, you know, it was about fame. It was about uh, success. It was about revenge. It, it, there were so many themes and they were set in so many places. Um, the show that that um, uh, Gary really forged his uh, his association with, with Sondheim with was Pacific Overtures, which I think is, unbelievably ignored and it's brilliant and it's um it's about a, a young japanese boy who sees commodore perry coming into open japan in the 19th century and then he's looking back at it and you know the the songs um you know the songs in in every show are just so extraordinary well in one of those shows hetty tell us a little bit about his last musical road show which uh tried out at the goodman theater before it wound up at the chicago shakespeare theater with a new name 
Right. Well, that, you know, that was a problematic show. It was about two brothers, uh, very different personalities and uh, trying to find success and not getting along. And I, I think the score is always is, is wonderful. I think maybe the, the storytelling needed a little bit of tweaking or whatever. But I also think that Gary found a way, um, you know, to, to get into it. And Gary, you also directed Gypsy, uh, one of several early shows, including West Side Story, that Sondheim wrote the lyrics, but not the music. Um, earlier in his career, he had to be more of a, a team player, but he had some great mentors as well. Well, I think those experiences, and first of all, they're two classics. I mean, the and the quality of the lyric writing, particularly in, well, I think in both of them, but particularly in Gypsy, is, I mean, among all the artistic departments of that piece, the lyric writing is as first rate as anything. And I think um, he was wise and counseled by Oscar Hammerstein, although he wanted to write music and lyrics, to take those um, projects and have the opportunity to work and be mentored further by Stephen, uh, by, sorry, by Leonard Bernstein and um, Jerome Robbins, Arthur Lawrence, and he, um, Julie Stein. So they were part, very crucial to his, to his, um, development as an artist. And and at the same time, they're just staggeringly brilliant. Right, and the one thing, you know, that I heard him talk to Patty Lupon about, and he does not like being interviewed, but he, he was very, very gracious with Patty. And uh, he, you know, he, he cursed himself for not having exactly the right accent on a word in one of the songs in West Side Story, which was fascinating because he did not believe in twisting the, the singing of the words, which were very important to him, to meet the music or to you know to make a, a comic point, it was he was so fastidious about language, and so when people compare him, you know they call him the musical theater Shakespeare. It, he really did earn that that title. And before we let you go, obviously, you know, we're, we're talking about him being this, you know, spectacular uh, wordsmith. Uh, Gary, I'll ask you first. Do you have a favorite lyric? De Maupassant's candor would cause her dismay. The Brontes are grander, but not very gay. Her taste is much blander, I'm sorry to say, but is Hans Christian Andersen ever risque? It's a lyric from A Little Night Music. All right, you called that um, one up quickly, which means it was it was right there on the tip of your tongue. I mean, uh, I have many, but that would always, if I just want to go, my God, how could you do that? It's, um, <laughs> you know, that's the one I pull up. Okay, uh, Gary Griffin and Hetty Weiss, thanks to you both for joining us. Thank you. And on our website, there is more from Hetty Weiss on memorable productions of Stephen Sondheim shows in Chicago.